I guess I became interested in endometriosis about the mid-90s, and I was seeing patients that would tell me that they'd been through pill after pill after pill, and they had a whole drawer for them, and they were all bleeding despite being, you know, having the GP change pills. It just wasn't working. I thought, that's something's not right. Um, <clears throat> in fact, a lot of those people had endometriosis, and we now know they also had adenomyosis, which is endometriosis in the muscle of the womb. So I, I have, um, I've set up two clinics, one in Brisbane at Wesley, which is a Brisbane endometriosis clinic, and one at North Lakes, which is a huge, uh, a huge area uh, just north of Brisbane. To try, and I go up there to try and get the patients to um, you know, not have to travel down to Brisbane. Uh, I'm a supporter of, uh, of Quendo and have been for a long time, and um, I actually give money to various charities, including Quendo. Now, so I was giving the topic of you know, what's in your toolbox. Well, I guess there's a couple of different sorts of toolboxes, probably three. There's the your toolbox, there's the GP's toolbox, and there's my toolbox. And there's probably other ones as well. So let's just talk about you know, various types of toolboxes that might be available. Um, let's start with uh, my toolbox. Now, my toolbox, I think, has a lot of useful tools in it. Uh, and they're used in an orderly and correct manner, I think, uh, to diagnose endometriosis, um, uh, rather than um, some of the toolboxes, which I'll show you later, which are just a mess. Are there any GPs in the audience? No, good. Uh, well, they should be in the audience, because, because the problem, a lot of the problem starts with the GPs lack of knowledge or um, uh, lack of willingness to send their patients on early enough to a specialist uh, like Susan or myself or there's a half a dozen other people in Brisbane that can do the same work um, to have an early diagnosis of what the hell's going on. And in a few moments time I'll, I'll show you some slides of a 14 year old lady that I operated on yesterday and give you, you know, the background as to what happened before I saw her. Um, so I've got experience, I've got interest, I've got extreme interest in trying to diagnose this condition early in teenagers, both conditions early in teenagers. Um, I, I think that I am good at listening to patients and that's very important. If you don't sit down and listen to, to what patients are trying to tell you, you'll miss the diagnosis. In fact, I can almost always um, make the diagnosis of endometriosis in the first few sentences that they tell me. And if they don't tell me, then I will ask them a few, a few questions and it becomes pretty obvious. Um, yes, I'm doing research. I'm doing some research into... I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to collect and get some sort of sense of how many teenagers have actually got adenomyosis, right? And that's that group of patients where you might laparoscope them and think, not much wrong here but there is something wrong because they've got endometriosis that's sort of hidden inside the muscle, very common. Um, so, so Susan mentioned um, the ultrasound. I have patients that come along and I seriously, they have had six scans and they're all normal, right? And they've been told for years, there's nothing wrong with you because the, wrong with you because the scans are normal. But wrong, that's not right. I think if you have one scan, you personally as a, as a patient, and that's normal, but you've still got pain, and the GP can't tell you why you've got the pain, is you press the GP for a referral. Now, if that GP won't give you a referral to a specialist, I'm not saying me, there's lots of other people who can make the diagnosis, go to another GP uh, and get a referral early. That's an order. Um, uh, <clears throat> CT scans don't help much. Um, an MRI scan, uh, which is where you go into a little um, uh, pipe and have a magnetic uh, uh, beam across your body. And uh, anyone had an MRI in the audience? Yeah, so like, yeah, okay, most of you. Okay, good. Um, uh, they they're good um, for weeding out that diagnosis of adenomyosis in someone that's already had one or two laparoscopies. So I like Susan see a lot of second opinions. And one of the first things I do is I assume that the, that the gynaecologist before me has um, diagnosed endometriosis and cut the endometriosis out, you know, as it should be. So if that's been done, how come they've still got pain? 
Well, one other reason that they may still have pain, as Susan said, you know, you don't see it all necessarily, is adenomosis. So I then say, okay, go and have an MRI scan. The little problem is that there's no rebate. You're 350 bucks and you don't get anything back. But it might be useful information, you know, money well spent. So I'm looking through about 1,000 MRI scans uh, and trying to, you know, look at... Yeah, mainly the age, like where does it start or when, does it, when can we diagnose? I've got 12, 13, 14 year olds, not just one or two, quite a few. So, um, uh, what else have we got? Now, with surgery, the other thing that, that we all have, we all should have in our toolbox is the fact that if, if you go and burn the top off endometriosis or burn a bit of endometriosis or zap it or laser it or whatever, you're not doing the job properly if you're a gynecologist. You've got to cut it out and that's called excisional surgery. And that can be quite extensive, and I'll show you what I did on the 14-year-old um, in, in later on, um, just last night. Now, medicines, um, if you cut out the endometriosis and you, and you treat the adenomyosis, uh, you're still going to need some sort of medicine, right? Now, that might be the pill, it might be the pill and progesterone, it might be a marina, and, uh, and, and the pill and progesterone it might be two marinas, the pill and progesterone, it might be the pill... Sorry, it might be a, a marina or two, and Zolodex or Cineral nasal spray. So often it's a bit of a fiddle to get your bleeding under control. But once we get the bleeding under control, we normally get the pain under control. And if we don't get the pain under control, they go to Susan or someone else. So, you know, that's, about, cause that's what pain clinics are for. Um, right, so, <clears throat> but to do all that, you need, uh, you need the right person, right? You need someone that's qualified. Uh, to look at your problem and, and make a diagnosis and, and fix it. Um, in other words, you don't get a, a bricky to come and fix an electrical problem. Um, all right, so I mentioned the pills, um, and, and <clears throat> you know, it's so common to hear that I've tried this pill and the GP's changed it, and they've changed it half a, time, half a dozen times and I'm still bleeding. The, the reason that I tell my patients that, you know, the pill is not good for endometriosis necessarily, is that the pill's made for the stock standard woman, right? If you've got, if you have endometriosis and or adenomosis, you're not the stock standard woman anymore. There's not enough hormone in that stock standard pill to treat your problem. And that's why you get all the funny bleeding. Um, it's a bit more, a bit more detailed than that, but that's a, that's a good sort of um, way to explain it. Um, so, but what, and what the pill can do, so if you say, say you're 15, 16, 17, and you get put on the pill by the GP that'll, you know, the, the, here, take the pill, it'll fix it. It won't fix it, and what happens is that the disease just smoulders along. It doesn't make it go away, just smoulders, 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 and you're just delaying the diagnosis. And if you put someone on the pill too early, it will stump, your, stump their growth. So it's not a good first-line treatment in teenagers. If the GP puts someone on the pill and then does a referral, that's okay, because you know, you've, you've tried to settle down the periods, but you're still getting a specialist opinion. So I think that's all right, but not a pill for one or two years with problems and then you know, see what happens and eventually get the, get the, uh, get the referral later. Um, so in other words, we don't want to use the pill to try and delay uh, having a laparoscopy done. And I've been at comp conferences where we talk to GPs, like we have the round table thing, and we go and uh, come and ask you questions, and they say, but, but wouldn't you just put it on the pill first? But, you know, you, despite the fact you've just said to the whole audience of GPs that, that you wouldn't do that, wouldn't you do that? No, that's not what you do, in my opinion. All right. <clears throat> so the GP's toolbox, uh, wrong one, the GP's toolbox, um, I had a messier slide than that, but I couldn't find it again when I did the thing. But the GP's toolbox is sometimes all over the shop, right? Um, they might uh, say, you're too young to have endo, uh, or you'll grow out of it, the pill will fix it, your mother had it, it's all right. And mothers sometimes do that to daughters too, uh, et cetera, et cetera. What I'm trying to do, so what, what am I doing with my toolbox? Uh, I'm trying to um, help GPs. You don't necessarily need to be able to read that. There's a magazine up here called Doctor Magazine, and it goes out to about 8,000 GPs in the southeast Queensland area, north and south coast. So I put a, a little, I initially put a little um, half-page, you know, article in it, and then I thought I can do better than that. So I actually put a one that kind of like a pull-out. It just falls out of the magazine, uh, and there's some up the back that you can have a look. It's not a book. It's just, a, it's just a. Uh, 
it's an aid memoir to the, to the GPs that endometriosis exists and there's a few symptoms of it, not all of them, uh, and, and they're just possible, to, and the same with adenomosis, and, ex, and that exists, and I've, and I've got pictures along the top. So hopefully they'll stick them under their little blotter and say, oh, I remember that. Yeah, maybe you should have a uh, you know, laparoscopy. On the left-hand one, as you look at up this end, uh, that's all talking about adenomosis. And um, the three uteruses that you can see, I hope, can you see them? They're a bit small, but they're not nice and round and smooth like Susan's showed us. They're all bumpy, okay, uh, or soft. So if I see that, uh, and there are some subtle signs we look for as well, if I see that, then we get an MRI scan. Now, the MRI scan, the MRI scan is best done just before you ovulate, right, in the late proliferative phase of the cycle. And we're looking for something called the junctional zone, JZ. And it's the junction between what Susan showed as the endometrium, right, the word that we get endometriosis from, and the myometrium, the muscle. So a junctional zone should be just five millimetres or less. We can make the diagnosis on the MRI scan if that is more than 12 millimetres. Okay, so if you've got a, a junctional zone where the endometrium is burrowing into the muscle more than 12 millimetres, that's adenomosis for sure. If it's between 5 and 12, it really bugs me when it is because you can't make the diagnosis. But we're, we're working towards it. And then we can also look, especially the smaller uterus, at the ratio of the, uh, of the junctional zone to the myometrium. In other words, how far in does it go? Does it go... 40%, which is okay, or does it go 80%, which is not okay, or full thickness? Because sometimes you've got endometrium, it just fills the whole of the muscle. And that, that's another reason for pain, especially back pain and pain down the legs. So we got that, and, uh, and we see that on MRI scan, then um, that's adenomosis. Um, so yeah, hopefully that, that'll help the GPs have something in their head when you come to see them but you've got to be proactive as well. What you've got to do is you've got to ask them, right? You've got to go to a GP and ask them for a referral. There's enough on Dr. Google for you almost to make your own diagnosis on, with your symptoms. It's just from getting from your symptoms to a laparoscopy early enough that's important. Um, all right, so at some point the light bulb will come on, the light bulb moment will come on, that's why I've had all these symptoms for so many years, right? Um, and the good thing about the clinics that are around Brisbane and Ecker, um, so Ecker, Ecker was started by Carl Wood in about 18, 1988 or something, ages ago. And, and each state has a group of doctors that are interested. There's, not, there's, there's lots of doctors in Brisbane that are interested in endo, but I think I'm the only one here that's actually a part of Ecker, and there's a person down the Gold Coast as well. But the thing is, we've got to all cooperate with each other, right? So we've got to cooperate with physios, and, and I've, I've got a good uh, physios and naturopaths, and I don't care how people get better, as long as they get better, right? The pain specialists. Um, so I've got a good team, I've got a good anaesthetic team, four guys, uh, all had them all for 10 years. I've got the same surgical assistants. I think in your book, you've got the same surgical assistants as well. So, and then <coughs> we work as a team with self-help groups as well. So what's on the self-help group, group for you guys is a, is a big help. And I always, I give my patients, all of them, I give them a, a brochure from the, um, from Quindown. All right, so there's always someone, I think, on the phone 24 hours a day, is that right? Okay, so if patients have got pain or need help, they can ring up. And that's what this organisation, organisation is about. Uh, just to get some support. Okay, <clears throat> the password. It's almost like you need to crack the password to get a referral from GPs. I'm still cracking on about GPs not sending people early enough. So uh, <clears throat> you've got to be persistent, we've got to be persistent, we've got to have passion in what we're dealing with. Um, you've got to be annoying, right? You've got to annoy the hell out of your GP to get a referral. And I'll tell you a bit more, when you see this 15-year-old girl, you know, what she went through to get a referral, uh, we've got to all be aware of what the signs and symptoms are. I mean, they're written everywhere. Um, there's some subtle ones that are best and pretty common ones. Um, uh, if the GP does a few tests and is being delayed a little bit, doing scans and blood tests, just say, look, when am I getting the referral? Just be proactive. Um, 
Yeah, look for your, look for gynaecologists on the on the web or these or the clinics. Um, the Quendo's uh, website they've got lists of GP specialists, I'm sure. Um, and then once you've got a diagnosis, you've got to get some direction because it doesn't always go smoothly. I mean, just because you've got a diagnosis of endo or adeno or both, there's ups and downs, right? So sometimes it'll take six months to get a patient to stop bleeding, which is what we want to happen. We can, we can stop the ble bleeding, we, we stop a lot of the pain. And that might mean that you need to, to take you know, pills, potions, lotions, whatever. And people say, oh, it's not natural. Like the marine is not natural. No, it's not natural. Of course it's not. But, but look what nature did to you in terms of giving you endo and adeno. Seriously, that's, what, you know, that's my response. Um, and we discuss what we're going to give people, obviously. But sometimes you have to do some other stuff. Um, now, social media. Um, yeah, I'm a bit like you. I'm a bit, you know, not good at it. But I'm working on it. Um, yeah. So Dr. Google's great, provided you know who Dr. Google is, okay? So what I suggest you do is you go to some decent Dr. Googles, like the Mayo Clinic's good, Ecker's good, my website's good. There's a few other doctors in Brisbane who've got a good website. Gina Pecoraro's good. Um, rather than go on the kind of chat rooms, I think that's a bit dangerous. The chat rooms often, if you, according to my daughter who's 22, um, they'll be you know, up at night chatting with, um, with blue light on their phones. Guess what blue light does? Makes you stay awake. You know about that? Set the phone, if you want to do it, put it on pink light on your iPhone. You can, so pink light's better, makes you sleep better. If, you, if you've got pain and worry from endometriosis and you can't sleep and you're tired, your pain's got to be worse, right? You need to be well rested, so. Dr. Google uh, carefully, network with good people in the, in the Quendo. Um, keep out of bad chat rooms because you you know, it'll just, sometimes I think it's just churning of bad symptoms sometimes. Anyone been through that or not? Maybe not. All right, now, the other thing is, now that's my blue 1956 MGA in the background. Um, I had a bit of a scratch on the front mudguard, so I decided to take it apart and repaint it, and I've just kept on going, and it's take me another six months to put it together. But what I'm trying to get at is, it's a bit like endometriosis, like we're not there yet. We haven't, we, we haven't dissected what the, the real cause is, where it's gonna to go to, we don't know the right treatments. It's a work in progress. So hang in there, um, uh, because um, the longer you hang in there, the more likely you are to get a get decent treatment. Now, you've all seen the endometriosis book. I, I bought 100 from you, or 200 a couple, a couple of years ago. I give my patients, uh, I gave my patients a free one. I need to order some more from you because it's a good book. Um, and obviously there's some more stuff. The adenomosis one, I don't know where I saw that, but I picked it up and said, oh, patient brought it in. I have never seen a book on adenomosis before. So um, there is a book out there on adeno, right, that'll tell you about it. Um, and so there's a few books around, so read different things, that's helpful. Uh, <clears throat> I've already been through this, really. So when you have your diagnosis of endo or adeno, what we want you uh, to realise is that we're trying to get there, but it might go up and down around the corner a bit on the way, especially where fertility is concerned. For example, if someone uh, can't get pregnant uh, after a while, if we do a laparoscopy and we do an MRI scan, um, we might need to treat those people with uh, the, the find adeno. We need to treat that adeno in order to allow them to get pregnant more quickly. Because guess what? Not only does bad endometriosis cause problems, but bad ad adeno causes problems at that junctional zone where the little spiral arteries are that are gonna let your baby latch on and get the blood supply. So there's a way of reversing that, and that's to give you about a two month course of cineral spray up your nose or a couple of injections of, of Zolodex. So you might need to sort of delay things in order to get a better result. Now, where am I? Uh, okay, this lady here, you might look at, so this is the pouch of Douglas, so thanks for showing us the pouch of Douglas so well before. Um, now, th there's, can you see in there, right, there's a whole lot of little lesions of, of, uh, of endometriosis. I'd already done a little bit of work then and I thought, no, I'll keep going. So, uh, what I've done, the next slide, this is the 14 year old, okay? Uh, she was part, when she saw me two weeks ago, she said to, with her mum, she said, 
uh, I started my periods when I was 12 and I was using a maternity pad hourly at night time. No, not a maternity pad, a, 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 a big thick pad. What are they called? Super something, yeah. Pad, right? Then, a year later, it was double. And then a year later, it was a maternity pad. Okay, she's 14. But it gets better. Okay, so this is what I did. I took all that stuff out, like the whole... This, this is actually a little rectal probe that we put in from the bottom end, all the sister does, so I don't cut into the rectum. Um, it's probably up a bit far, but we need to know where that rectum is, otherwise we won't... Um, we won't... Um, we, you know, we could cut it. Normal ovaries, if you look at the bottom of the uterus, see it's a little bit scalloped or bumpy, tiny bit bumpy, can you see that? So she's going to have an MRI scan. That's the sort of subtlety that I'll look for. Uh, just to make sure she hasn't got adenomosis. Now, so <clears throat> what I do with all my operations is I get the number of the mum or the dad or the sister or whoever, boyfriend, and say, do you mind if I text them? Because if you try and talk to a patient uh, immediately after surgery, they go, yeah, 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 but they don't remember a damn thing, and they ring you the next day. So, and I don't mind talking to them, but um, I, what I do now is I, I text whoever they want me to text, a fairly long text, and I said, you yeah, Mum, she's fine, we found that, da, 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 And I said, can you remind me what she went through beforehand? Because I had this talk in mind. So this is a, this is, um, a picture. This is, there's two texts she sent me, two pages of text. And basically, despite the fact that she's bleeding to death every, every month, in inverted commas, um, she went to see a gastroenterologist. Like, I don't know what they're thinking, but they, she had an endoscopy, yeah, top end, bottom end, right? And she had a bit of inflammation uh, around the esophagus, but tablets will fix that, she'll be fine. Uh, she wasn't fine, she's bleeding. Um, and she had diarrhea every day of a period as well, which that's the prostaglandins making her do, do that. Prostaglandins coming from the endometriosis. She went on a gluten-free diet, there's more to it, I couldn't put it all in there, but. Um, and then she had a food intolerance, she saw a naturopath for seven months, and this is mum saying, crazy restricted diet, saw dieticians, saw an immunologist, and our last stop was me. I reckon I should have been the first stop. Just one. But anyway, so that's the sort of stuff we hear all the time. It drives me crazy. It really drives me crazy. I just think, you know, you poor thing, bleeding for three years that much is just not right. So, that's very bad, okay? So, the ones who are going to change it are you guys and Quinda, right? That's, it should be easier than that. Now, this, will this video play? I've got a little video that's going to play. Uh, now, the video is actually where I've cut stuff out of the uh, left pelvic sidewall, uh, and then I am going to show you the right pelvic sidewall as well. Okay, so, what have we got here? Uh, all right, so, from a distance, that's the ureter up there, so we've dissected all that off. This is bowel. We're coming down to the pouch of Douglas. And there's the uterus, bumpy again on the back. I don't know whether it's got out there. And then on the right side, this is what the left side looked like. Uh, you know, heaps of stuff. That's all got to come off, and it did. If you leave little bits of white stuff, you're undertreating them. So. Yeah, look, I don't know whether she's got adeno or not, but it just it looks a bit suspicious, so we'll do an MRI on her. Okay. Uh, so, that is supposed to represent that all of you guys are all different, okay? Your symptoms might be different, um, your, your way you feel pain is different, your medicine might be different, um, but you're sort of suffering from the same thing, okay? Um, and it's good to have Quindo looking after you. So, thank you.